the net is open via uh, various tools like blogging, Twitter, Kickstarter, print on demand, a new range of options, as well as synergies with small presses. Again, that the idea of the web serving as a kind of handmade print. For instance, Retrofit, uh, that new publisher of floppies, is a Kickstarter funded project. While well, Kate Beaton's first book, not a book from Drawn Quarterly, but her first book, uh, was printed and sold by a webcomic merchandise online. Essentially, she published it herself with, with them to facilitate. In conclusion, let's consider how these synergies work in the case of a particular artist. I'm going to take a now fairly well known cartoonist. Has anyone here read Sarah Glidden's work? Right? Okay. Glidden is uh, an artist from a small press and mini comics background. Um, She's a member, along with Kate Beaton and others, of an artist studio in Brooklyn called Pizza Island. Uh, she now creates comics both for the web and books. Her self-published mini-comic series, How to Understand Israel in 60 Days or Less, um, is a mix of memoir, travelogue, and political journalism in a, in a somewhat post-Joe Sacco mode. Um, uh, she started doing this mini-comic um, uh, back in 2008, uh, and in fact, won her recognition. Uh, she won recognition for this at the Small Press Expo 2008 as the uh, <coughs> new talent. Uh, she soon got a contract with all things DC Comics Vertigo in uh, to publish uh, a revised and completed version of this book. Um, it was not serialized from that point forward. It was never serialized by a big publisher. Instead, it was released as a complete finished work. At, one, at which point it garnered an audience larger by an order of magnitude than her many comic audience. Uh, the book has since been widely translated in Europe, uh, including here in Spain. Anyone here read it in Spanish? No? Right. It is available in a handful of, of European languages. Recently, Glidden has done online comics for the Jewish Quarterly, of which she is reportedly the resident cartoonist at this point, as well as a website called Cartoon Movement. I don't know if anyone here knows that, but Cartoon Movement is dedicated to political cartooning and comics um, journalism. Again, it's the kind of initiative that's hard to imagine without Josako's success. Um, meanwhile, Glidden has turned to Kickstarter to raise the travel funds she needs to research her next book called Stumbling Towards Damascus, which is a meta-journalistic study of journalists um, sponsored by a nonprofit called the Common Language Project. But clearly, Sarah Glidden is working at the intersection of print and online culture. She's using the web to develop, finance, and promote a variety of projects, both on and offline. She's essentially working with an NGO at this point, right? um, um, a nonprofit for the public good, so to speak. So she's pursuing a variety of opportunities. The old realities of cartoons like Glidden, including prolonged serialization, and the necessity of appealing to comic book stores mean next to nothing to her. She's not playing by the same rules. So, is Glidden an alternative cartoonist? Is she mainstream? That means, obviously, she has to work hard to find or create opportunities without the assurances, but also without the impediments that come from working in a time of sure and settled arrangements. Right? At the present moment, such cartoonists, cartoonists who seek to explore and adapt the art form for new purposes, have no one guaranteed path to distribution, exhibition, and success. There is no one pipeline that is to be preferred to all others. Not the direct market, nor the book trade, nor even the web. The comics field has become diffuse unpredictable and harder to keep track of, which I can only say, yes. Um, uh, independent artists today, this is my conclusion, enabled by the cultural alternative comics, by the history, however, ambivalent of a direct market, um, and by the rise of the graphic novel, and inspired by the idealism and energy of the mini-comics movement, these artists today must make their own way but not without encouragement. Right? Instead, a part of that way includes teaching for many, not just Jessica Abel and her partner, her husband Matt Madden, but many, many others. Right? Um, which will be, a, will be a little pointing to some of us academics. It's the one way in which one 
um, uh, underwrites and informs the other work that you do. Teaching has become increasingly, not just you know, the perfect commercial illustration, but the teaching and, and talking about comics with others. Um, so there, it's not as if there's no encouragement. Right? It's just a kind of enterprising, scurrying nature that's required of cartoonists now. It's not enough to say, I have a book ready for the direct market. Let's make sure Diamond gets it into the shops. That's not adequate, if indeed it ever was. Precisely because the old rules are inadequate, now is the time of radical promise. Indeed, this new upsurge in self-expressive and artistically ambitious promise may dissolve the old categories altogether. So what was once a stable and predictable opposition, um, mainstream comics versus independent comics, um, has become hopelessly blurred. But, I believe, to the betterment of comics. Gracias.